Over the past few weeks, I've been thinking a lot about the church's response or what should be the church's response in the midst of the social and racial unrest that is sweeping across North America, particularly in the United States and Canada. And I found myself drawn to the memories of Martin Niemöller. Now, Martin Niemöller was a German pastor and theologian during the, the rise of Adolf Hitler, during the Nazi era in Germany. And he was very disillusioned by the response of Christians and the response of intellectuals to the rise of Nazism. Uh, you may know that the large majority of Christians during the rise of Nazi Germany, during the uh, the period when Adolf Hitler had power, most of the German Christians compromised their faith and adapted their theology to fit nicely with Nazi doctrine and is one of the great shames of the Christian church. But there was a small group of Christians, a small group of believers who called themselves the Confessing Church. People like Martin Niemöller, Karl Barth, uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the, the members of the Confessing Church declared that, that Christian doctrine was incompatible with the teachings of Nazi Germany, and they stood up at the risk of their lives to Adolf Hitler and to Nazism. But this was a very small group, and as I said, Martin Niemöller was so disillusioned by the the large number of, of Christians who refused to take a stand against Hitler. And he wrote a poem to express his disillusionment. And you may have heard of the poem. It goes like this. When the Nazis came for the communists, I did not speak out as I was not a communist. When they locked up the social Democrats, I did not speak out. I was not a social Democrat. When they came for the trade unionists, I did not speak out as I was not a trade unionist. When they came for the Jews, I did not speak out as I was not a Jew. And when they came for me, there was no one left to speak. Now this much well-known and beloved poem has been adapted many times. And one of the more recent versions was composed by an American. And this is how this person adapted the poem this way. First, they came for the Muslims, and I did not speak out because I was not a Muslim. Then they came for the Mexicans, and I did not speak out because I was not a Mexican. Then they came for the feminists and the gays, and I did not speak out. I was not a feminist or gay. Then they came for the blacks, and I did not speak out because I was not black. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to draw any kind of moral line between what happened in the 1930s and 40s in Nazi Germany and what's happening in Canada and the United States today very different situations, but the similarity, the analogy I am seeking to, to draw is that in both instances, the church has a responsibility to speak out. The church has a responsibility to respond and to act. All down through history, the church has been called to be the voice for the voiceless, to stand up for those who have been knocked down when others look away, the church is called to shine the spotlight of justice in the dark corners of our culture. There are people to, who say that the church needs to stick to spiritual issues. I'm going to address this on Sunday in my message. But let me tell you right here and right now that the church is called to speak out whenever they see, whenever we see anything that is going against God's will for this world. I'm reminded of the words of Micah in chapter 6, verse 8, where he wrote, 
God has shown you, O oh, oh mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God? This is our challenge. These are our marching orders. And every church has to decide how do we respond.